Hello and welcome back and welcome to what is going to likely be the final chapter on the solar capacitor examiner um, type 1.6 model CF and if we look at the unit now and compare it well here's what it used to look like you can see uh, the bottom was pretty rotten and the paint was pretty well gone and we've replaced all of the capacitors inside this unit and some of the resistors that have traveled or uh, traveled that have uh, drifted out of uh, tolerance you can see the bottom now is uh, rust free we have new feet on it fresh coat of paint cleaned up the front panel we completely removed this front panel rust free screws Interestingly, I found the uh, serial number written across the front of the plate that's underneath here, the sub-chassis. When you remove this, when they spray painted this originally, uh, this front panel was not on and the overspray runs in most of the distance. And the actual serial number is written, handwritten across it, underneath this. We've replaced, these were originally ink stamped. And we have some labels now marking the capacitors, and the back looks pretty good, and we've put some leather conditioner on the handle, although I would not trust that <clears throat> to carry the unit. The leather's too dry rotted, but it looks okay. So where are we electrically and functionally with this? Well, I am afraid that, uh, well, let me do this first. This has been part of the process of trying to get it working correctly. And uh, believe me, what you're seeing here is about one-tenth of the material I've invested into this. Not to mention over the last month, I've been coming home from work and putting one to two and sometimes three hours into trying to make this functional on the quick check function and I've had some success some measure of success but it's not a hundred percent and I am NOT investing any more time in here the reason being this is a patent drawing for this and I have the original patent and you can see what appears to be or I took to be a window line or ladder line and I've tried window line. I have tried various twin leads. I have tried pairs of coaxial cables tied together. I have tried twisted leads. I have tried standard test leads. I have tried adding lumped inductance. And the reason I've been through all of that is both the manual for this and the patent for this say that this unit will not work without the special test lead. They also warn you not to use the special test lead on the leakage test. Don't apply any high voltage to this with the leakage tester. And it talks in several places about the distributed inductance and distributed capacitance of this lead. And what I took to be windows, I'm beginning to wonder if they have distributed capacitors and inductors down the length of this. I don't know. It seems a little far-fetched. But here's what we're up against. This is supposed to take a lead that plugs in the front there special test lead that's upside down and it's supposed to be immune to hand capacitance and yet be able to do in circuit checks for capacitance anywhere from 100 picofarads to 50 microfarads now I can make it read on uh, or show a capacitor in circuit from about 65 picofarads up to 50 microfarads. But they have a couple of special test uh, calibrations that are supposed to work on this. Now I've been through so much of this stuff. I've used 
AC uh, zip line. I've used, you name it. I've, I've been working on this thing. And you're supposed to uh, grab the hot lead. And I've got, yep, this one's marked. Grab the hot lead and zero the meter. And then when you release the hot lead, there's a trimmer on the side and you're supposed to turn that in and out until the meter reads and then sharply goes back to zero. Well, I cannot attain that with this lead. I can with some of these other leads, but then, oh, for example, if I go with this piece of twin lead, I can attain that calibration point that they talk about but then the unit will only measure from about 65 picofarad to 500 picofarad and it won't work on the larger values. A second part of that calibration assembly is after you have reached that peak, you're supposed to short the test leads together. And when you short the test leads together, if it reads down scale like so, you adjust this second capacitor down here until the reading goes back to zero. Well, if I use a... Uh, I don't even see the lead now. Oh, if I use this lead, which is a coaxial lead, I can make it calibrate on that end correctly. But then it will only function from about a uh, 1,000 picofarad to 50 microfarad. I cannot find anything that will work over the full range and calibrate the way they want it to. And I know all the armchair quarterbacks out there are going to say, well, you should have tried this, you should have tried that. I'm handing off the information I have and hoping that somebody else has the time to do this. I am getting ready to retire, and I have... Uh, purchased a bunch of gear that I've shown in previous videos to do the FM alignment and theory series to go on in hand in hand with the AM series I did originally. To have any hope of doing that before I retire, I have to put this aside. I'm done with this thing. Not my favorite unit anyway. And let me give you a warning about this. The leakage test on this uses 600 volts. When you're in the leakage setting over here, that's 600 volts being applied to the test leads. If you test a capacitor for leakage at any rating under that, you're going to destroy it. Not my favorite capacitor tester. The calibration on the dial is not very accurate, and I have a later schematic for this that shows some... Uh, changes or some revisions to probably make it more accurate. There's one that shows a trimmer uh, pot at the end of the scale so you can calibrate one end and net in the other. There's a bunch of changes that were made to this. I did any of them that would have affected this test. Nothing helped. It also says the wrong 6J5 tube won't work. I have seven of them. They all test good. Some of them wouldn't oscillate in this, just like the manual said. The manual said some, some of these tubes won't work even if they're good. I have tubes in there that will oscillate correctly. I have been over and over and over on this thing. Now, I do have it functioning after a fashion. Let me get some of this junk out of here. And let me grab a couple of things off the floor. I'll be right back. And incidentally, I've been through probably $30 of high quality um, ladder line here, as well as I've sacrificed four different uh, folded FM dipoles to scrounge up enough twin lead for this. This unit operates on 10 megahertz, give or take. And of course, you're going to have harmonics at 20. 30 and 5 and I have tried resonant lengths of this of course now you're getting out to 12 and 15 feet of cable I'm sure they didn't have 15 foot test leads so whatever they did had lumped inductance 
of some kind in the leads and may even have had capacitors. And again, <clears throat> that may be what we're seeing here on that lead. I don't know. I'm sure, again, they didn't have 15 foot test leads or 20 foot test leads or whatever it took to make it resonant at half wave, quarter wave at 10 or 20 or 30 megahertz. And I've tried it anyway. I, I have taken these and I've shorted them and found resonant points. I have done everything. At any rate, you can see the meter right now is full scale where it should be. When you short these, again, it should not come off of there. This would be the test that shows it shorted. It goes back up to the top of the scale. When it goes back up to the top of the scale, that's showing a short. If it's not shorted, it reads down scale. So we have, and it says it will test in circuit across a resistance. Here's a capacitor across the resistor. And you can see it's reading down scale. And if I push the knob here, oh, now it's reading shorted. There's a trimmer cap in the side. I've had this trimmer cap. I've been adjusting it so much, I actually wore the threads out of the trimmer capacitor and had to repair that. I didn't strip them, I actually wore them out of the out of the body of the capacitor trying to find a combination. And this actually used to work. And I don't know what's going on now. Because this actually worked... Oh crap. Oh, there we go. Nope. There we go. Now it's showing that that's a working capacitor across a resistor. In one place in the manual it says it will also do the same thing with an inductor. So here's one with an inductor. That one's showing a dead short. A second place in the manual it says if the capacitor... Oh, excuse me, that's the wrong one. Yeah, that's a, that's a resistor with an inductor. That was a different science experiment. I don't see the capacitor across the inductor. At any rate, it's supposed to also work across an inductor according to one paragraph in the manual, but three paragraphs later it says if the capacitor is across an inductor it will show as a shorted capacitor. So I think what they're saying is some values might work, some won't. Limited usefulness. There's 65 picofarads. You can see it's reading down scale correctly, and it's not a shorted capacitor. And it's a small value cap, so that, that's where you would test here. And the fact that it doesn't go full scale again means it's not shorted. If I short the test leads and push the test, you can see it reads upscale. That's a short. Here's a 50 microfarad capacitor and it's reading down scale and again it's showing it's not quite full scale when I do that so that's not a shorted capacitor. Here is a shorted capacitor and if I put it across these and check you can see it goes right off the end of the scale full scale. That's a shorted cap. Will it work in circuit? Sort of. Here's some stuff. Here's a, are we in frame here? Yeah. Here's a little ceramic cap capacitor that looks like a resistor. This is actually across the line, the AC line, reading down scale. And if I push the buttons, of course it's a big enough value. That shows a short, but this one does not. So that capacitor is neither open nor short. Now if it was an open capacitor, I'd get no reaction from the unit at all. which would tell you that it was open circuited and it would have to be changed. Here's another one in circuit. And again, it's going to determine whether or not it's in parallel with a resistor or an inductor or a transformer. Reading slightly down scale. When I push the button, it reads further down scale, not shorted. And this is all without disconnecting anything. That's the, what's supposed to be the beauty of this. Again, not shorted. However, I have some disc, or not disc, excuse me, some molded mica capacitors over here. That's showing good, okay? That is across an inductor. 
Here's another one across an inductor. If I can get on the other side of it. I think this one shows shorted. One of these I seem to recall shows shorted. Nope, that's showing a good capacitor. Okay. How about this one? There was one of these in here that was across a transformer winding. That's showing not shorted. When I, now this will not give you any value of capacitance. It just shows open or shorted. Um, or working as a capacitor. The fact that it reads down scale to, to some point means that the capacitor is upsetting the balance of the bridge. That one just moved it, but at least it's not shorted. It's going to depend on the value of the cap, how far down scale it reads. It's reading down scale, not shorted. So what's the use of all of this? It means you could power this up and be pretty certain that none of these capacitors are shorted for your initial testing. Now, of course, you're going to want to replace all of this because it's virtually guaranteed they're leaky. This is an old piece of equipment. This, incidentally, is the marker adder. This is one of the pieces that I will be restoring for the upcoming videos. The uh, line cord was completely just crumbled. It was just bare wires. And I don't think anybody's been inside of this for eons. Although I think I did see something. Uh, no, it wasn't this piece of gear. I've got so much equipment now. Something I had has been worked on. This isn't it. This, this I think, is 100% untouched inside at this point. At any rate, I'm rambling. I'm done working on this thing. It won't calibrate the way the manual says it should calibrate. It's because I don't have the proper test lead. I can find nobody out there who has ever seen these test leads. I've had responses from a few people on the videos, earlier videos of this, saying they have one of these, but they do not have, nor have they ever seen, the original uh, quick check test leads. And they give a part number for it. Uh, let me look in here real quick. Let me find it. All right, right here. It says operating procedure for shorts, opens, and intermittents. Plug in the special twin conductor QC465 test leads. Then it says down here the oscillator circuit is balanced for the interlead capacitance of the standard test leads. The quick check will not operate unless these leads are used. And it says it somewhere else in here that it has to use these test leads and it also says it in the patent. So, and I know somebody's going to say, well, you have to change the capacitance or try lumped capacitance or try adding capacitance. I've been there, folks. And I have tried different types of leads. Exam example, twin leads about 23 picofarads for a given for like a three foot length. The latter line is 13.5 picofarads. Twisted leads were about 23 picofarads. Line cord was about 60 picofarads. At three feet 18 inches of it was 30 picofarads. I've tried different lengths. For resonance, I've tried different lengths for different capacitance. I've tried adding lumped inductance and lumped capacitance in different and various spots on the leads. I just cannot find a combination that will meet all the requirements for balance of the circuit. I'm done. I've, I've torn up many dollars worth of expensive ladder line and torn up many uh, pieces of uh, FM folded dipole antennas for, for uh, twin lead. You can't get twin lead, by the way, or you can. You can get the foam fill filled twin lead. 100 feet of it, they're asking like $165 for TV lead-in wire out of their freaking minds. And I don't want the foam filled stuff because you can't separate it out like you can the normal twin lead. If you take this normal twin lead and carefully trim away the center section, you end up with 
two test leads and you can actually get your alligator clip strain relief around the insulation and you have a test lead that's likely to, to withstand a little handling. And this is one of the failed experiments. The foam fill stuff, you can't do that. You end up having to strip the wire out the side of it. You've got nothing to put the strain relief around. And no, I'm not going to try heat shrinking it. And no, I'm not going to buy $165 worth of stupid antenna twin lead. Asinine. Again, uh, this was an experiment to see if I could get this test circuit because I thought it might be fun to be able to quickly test the capacitors in the circuit. I think I would be just as reliable using an ohm meter on 90% of them to see if they're shorted before I fired it up. My normal procedure is to just ignore whether they're shorted or open and remove them and replace them because I know they're leaky. So no real value added to getting this going. It was just an experiment. There you have it. If you have one of these, do not use it for leakage tests on your expensive poly caps. For instance, uh, this guy here is rated for 400 volts. Here's a nice orange drop 2 microfarad. If you did a leakage test on this, you'll destroy it. Uh, when you hook it up to the circuit, it's going to begin to charge. It's going to go up past 400 volts, 500 volts. It's going to hit a point where the insulation breaks down. And what will happen is you'll hear a snap inside the capacitor. It may not go short circuit and it may not go open, but you've punched a hole in the insulation at that point. And I wouldn't put it in a radio or a piece of test equipment. I've actually tried that. I, I actually destroyed a few of these uh, TRW caps trying it out. And I'm not wrecking any more of them. Um, I don't know. Your call whether you want one of these or not. In my book, I think I'll use one of the Heath kits with the, uh, with the little neon lamp on the front because they'll test all the way down to about 80 volts or less safely. And anything below that, I'll use a solid state tester on. Okay, that's it. I'm going to move on to another project. I'm going to put this one away. I'm sorry the results weren't better. I'm sorry this video sounds a little bit, uh, uh, what do you call it? I don't know. Oh, and I misspoke earlier when I said the leakage test is 600 volts. I should have said the insulation resistance test, which is the leakage test for paper capacitors. That's the mega ohm scale, M times 1, M times 10, M times 100. And the way you set that up is you put it on the M times 1 or 10 or times 100 scale, and you set this at infinity. Now, at infinity, that's pumping 600 volts through this pair of test leads right here. This is a 3.3 .3 mega ohm resistor, and we should have something near that on the meter when this is connected. And it's measuring, I don't know, 3.8, because it starts at 3 mega ohms, 4, 5, 6, so on and on the... Uh, times one scale. So it's something north of three mega ohms and something south of four. If you had a capacitor doing that, you would write that off as being very, very leaky. The leakage test is for electrolytics, and that's on this scale. And for that one, for example, we have a, a new old stock here. This is a Zenith 20 microfarad, 20 microfarad, and 40 microfarad. The 20 microfarad is 475 volts. Uh, the second 20 is 300, and the 40 microfarad is 25 working volts. Bypass uh, capacitor, probably for an amplifier section. The wisdom today is to just chuck these in the bin and be done with them. I hang on to these in case I have some piece of test equipment that comes in or some piece of uh, electronics that comes in and needs one of these capacitors. And before I go out and spend money on a modern cap, I want to see if the circuit, if the thing is worth fixing or if it's going to work at all. I can reform these. And again, the common wisdom today is not to do that. But the way you do that is, okay, this is the half moon one, so I'm going to put this on negative. 
connect this to the half moon. I'm going to put this on 50 milliamp years in case this is dead shorted. And you see it read up scale and now it's dropping. So when it gets below 5 milliamp years on that scale, I can jump to the next one. And you can see it's falling off. That means this capacitor is charging and reforming. And again, this is a 400 volt section on that one. 475. So I can safely sneak this up over time and increase the current. And this is the leakage current. This is actually reading in milliampere's right now on this scale. That's the 5 milliampere scale right now. It's about 3.4 milliampere's. And if I let that drop off, and I probably shouldn't be pushing it that hard, this is a pretty old capacitor, so I'm going to turn it down. There's a milliamp and a half, and if I let this sit for half an hour, that leakage current should go away if this capacitor has any chance of working in the circuit. If that falls to zero, I'll sneak the voltage up again. If that falls to zero, I'll sneak the voltage up again until I get up to the working voltage of the capacitor. And if at the working voltage, voltage of the capacitor at 450 or 475 volts, if that thing falls down below a milliamp here, I'm pretty safe putting that in the circuit and using it for a while. Long term, will it fail? Is it dried out internally? Yeah, that's up to you to decide if that's worth, uh, r worth risking. I'm comfortable if at the working voltage the current drops off. I'll put it in as a temporary test to see if the rest of the equipment's worth working on. But this is taking an awful lot of, a lot, bleh, easy for me to say, an awful long time to fall off. And I suspect this capacitor has been sitting for so long, the fact that it's Zenith branded is probably 40 something years old or better. It is new old stock, it's never been in anything. But it's been around a long time. This is probably one of the ones that came out of the TV service shop that I emptied out many years ago. It's got to be almost 30 years ago now. I cleaned out a uh, television shop and got all the spares. Okay, we're down to a milliamp here, but we're only at 100 volts. Remember, this is a uh, 475 volt capacitor section. Incidentally, this is the one thing I do like about this is this is fairly accurate. This this uh, analog scale on here actually matches pretty well with the voltmeter. So we'll turn it up a little bit. There's two milliamp years. That's about 125 volts. And again, the current's falling off. So if you want to reform caps, this is a useful function. If you want to do mega ohm tests with any accuracy on uh, you know, what have you, insulation of whatever it is, that's your call. But if you're going to do the leakage tests up here at 600 volts, you're going to destroy these capacitors. Now what you can do is roll it back to 200 volts, have a non-accurate scale, then if you want, you'd probably be safe testing this at voltage. And that charge, that's charging, charging, charging. And when it gets back up to 200 volts, see that would be going towards infinity. <sighs> you know, it's back up to 200 volts. That tells me it probably isn't leaking. You can see there's no deflection of the meter now, so it, it can be used. But if you forget and leave it on a higher voltage, here you heard that pop, so that cap's a decent cap. If you forget and you're testing something at 500 volts and you pick up the next cap and test it for leakage, it's history. So you got to be very, very, very careful. Okay? That's it. I'm done. See ya.